Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. Um, happy Monday, everyone. We're so excited for this episode because we are telling some untold stories for the first time ever. We're talking to two people, um, JP and Wendy, who got engaged on season four, but their stories weren't followed. So... Yes. We are curious to see what happens because they happen in quite a few news articles, but the articles never like tell what really happened in their relationships, why they weren't followed, things like that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to get a, a different perspective and just to understand their feelings of it all. But I'm excited to talk to them too and get to know them a little bit. Um, anyways, what is going on in your life? <laughs> I mean, I'm still on my social media break. I said that I'd come back, but quite honestly, I've been enjoying it so much, just like not being preoccupied mm -hmm. with, I don't know, thinking about like what content am I, am I going to post or like comparing myself to other people on social media. I mean, that was the main reason why I like left um, for a little bit, but you know, I think I'm going to come back. I think Yay. there's like things I want to like share and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, nothing happening. We got such good reception though from our last episode talking about yeah. body confidence and body image and kind of our history um, with with how we viewed our bodies from yeah. the childhood going on the show and things like that. And And so we've seen your stories and we just want to say we've read as many DMs and emails as we could. And um, some of them have made us cry and um, – and just your sweet messages, like reminding Deep T and I how beautiful we are, or like what you thought of us on the show mm -hmm. and in positive light just um, really touched us. So I just want to say that to you guys that we we definitely see them and we're trying to respond to each one. Yeah, I've had so many good conversations about um, our topic last episode. And it's like there's been a lot of messages that have come through and just people relating to the story and just... Um, talking to me about their own experiences and like enlightening me on, on things. And it's like such a healthy discussion. So it's been, um, again, that's why I freaking love that we do have a platform sometimes, not sometimes like there's negatives and positives, but this is definitely a positive to it. It just like connects you to so many people. And we understand that everyone is going through something and something to keep in mind, but it is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's like interesting to just share kind of having been on a popular reality TV show and what it's really like on the other side. It's not sunshine and rainbows. It's not like this cool thing all of the time to say that we did love is blind. Like there's downsides to it. Mm -hmm. Not saying that Deep T and I don't feel like incredibly lucky to have like the opportunities we've had yeah. and especially to have like a podcast where people are willing to like listen and hear, um, you know, either like behind the scenes tea or like what's going on in our lives. But, um, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where I'm always curious, like when I watch reality TV shows, like what's really happening and what it's really like. So we're really glad that we're able to share it with you guys, especially our listeners. You guys have been so supportive and just so lovely and are like the best best audience, honestly. So thank you. And I think also <laughs> it's like, um, when we're vulnerable, it allows other people to be vulnerable along with us. So it like, you know, just breaks down those walls and we can have like authentic conversations then. So it's kind of cool, but yeah. How's the, how's the dating life going for you? Well, I went on a date what? and it was great. What? Why don't you yeah, tell me about this? Yeah, I was a friend this? of a friend. Excuse um, me. Because it was nothing. And I I don't know. It was just like kind of one of those things where I like impromptu just did it. And it was – he was really nice. And um, we'll just see where it goes. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I'm When I go on dates, I have like very low expectations that, yeah. you know, I'm always just like, let's just see. Do you ever, Anyways, what about um, you? What's going on? Go ahead. I, no, I was going to talk about that. Um, I was going to say, you know, date, it's it's pretty chill. But um, yesterday I was out and I saw a friend of somebody that I was dating in the past. And it made me like reconnect with him in a weird way. And I was like just texting him like, hey, I just saw this person and we were talking about you. Like, do you ever run into people like that? And you're like, you think about it and you're like, hmm, it, it could have been something, you know, I don't know. I'm in the what if stage of, yes. of things. <laughs> 
Yeah. No, I what if all the time. Yes. Um, like my ex-boyfriends DM'd me when our season came out, Love is Blind. And and mm-hmm. it was like messages like, oh, me and my girlfriend like watched you on the show and we are rooting for you. Yes. Like things like that. And then I would creep on their profile and see like they're either engaged now or like married or have kids. And I'm like, oh my God, like all I've done right now is like do a reality TV show. But I would look at their profiles and be like, what if like, if I stuck around or it worked out, would I, you know, would we be married? Like what would life look like? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I definitely do have those what ifs too, kind of like, yeah. not that I have any feelings for like my ex-boyfriends anymore, but yeah. I was always the one to kind of leave the relationships. I either like moved away or I was like, oh, I don't want to be tied down anymore. And then I always think to myself now that I'm 31 of like, you know, if I didn't just end it and like kind of like run off, I wonder where I would be in life. Like, yeah, would I have been married? Would I have a kid right now? Like all these things, because that's kind of where they are at. And I'm mm-hmm. so happy for them, but I definitely think about it. And it kind of is it this maybe I'm saying too much, but it sometimes makes me sad. Um what? No. I know. It like not. it's like It's more of like, wow, I haven't found my love of my life yet or like my partner that I want to settle down with. And, um, and I'm again, so happy for my exes. We would have never worked out long-term like, you know, now knowing what I know now, but it's more of like, um, yeah, like here I am. And all I did uh, is do a reality TV okay, show and it didn't gotta, work out. And, stop it. Stop you know. it right there because I think you need to change <laughs> that narrative in your head because I was literally talking to this about a, with a friend the other day and we were talking about like not timelines but where we're just at in life and I – women – well like people are actually getting married at a later age now it's just like the norm of it and it's because Mm -hmm. we're experiencing life experiences and you went on a tv show that is such a cool experience not many people can say that you did that and we've learned so much not many people want to do it (laughs) well that's fine but that you wanted to when you signed up baby girl (laughs) you wanted to and you know what um i think it's really cool that we get to experience life differently and our path is just looks a little different but that doesn't no, mean i agree it's not 100 percent. Mm-hmm. i do think about the what ifs too you're right it's something that's on our mind but wait do we want to tell our listeners that we are going to be recapping the ultimatum we're finally caught up yeah. we're gonna recap it i'm super excited well, i'm not caught up yet i am working through it i'm not a yes. big reality tv like binge watcher like oh, I like kind of like watching <laughs> yeah like I like watching on my own time but we are so excited to recap it because yes. we heard it was really really good well we've watched a few episodes and it's really mm-hmm. really good but I heard like it gets very juicy so I'm like very mm-hmm. excited to kind of finish watching but we will be recapping Woo-hoo! for those of you who have been asking yes um and is there any other love is blind uh news I don't think there's that much going on right Well, I did hear Matt and Colleen finally moved in together. So she posted on her Instagram to announce it. And we are so happy for that. Yes. Hey, we got the exclusive on that first on our episode, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. So she mentioned on our podcast already that her and Matt were like looking at a few places. Um, And, you know, it's kind of awesome that they took it on their at their own place. I know that there's there's Mm -hmm. a lot of opinions on, you know, Matt and Colleen as a couple. But like ultimately... I think people need to remember, like, you don't really know them, you know, yes. and, um, and we don't know really their relationship, but what we know is like, she seems very happy and, mm-hmm. um, she made a decision for them to move together and we, we are happy for them. Yeah. And also let them live, let them be friends. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Not that any of our listeners are doing anything, but anyway, but yeah, I think that's, um, about it. Should we get into our interviews? <laughs> Yes, we're so excited to speak with Wendy and JP, and we think you guys are really going to enjoy listening to their stories. Wendy Kong, welcome to Out of the Pods. We are so excited to talk to you because you are what we consider a lost story. So that's something that 
we kind of call the couples who get engaged, but their stories aren't followed. And you were a lost couple on Love is Blind season four in that you got engaged to a man named Jimmy, but your story was not followed um, on on the show itself. So we're yeah. really, really excited to just hear your story and tell it for our listeners. Yeah. So welcome. Welcome. You. Of course. And honestly, on this podcast, we truly haven't gotten like a raw perspective of someone who wasn't followed. So I'm so excited to pick your brain today just to see what the impact of all of it has been on you. How did you end up on Love is Blind season four? Um, So I actually I've had um, probably like, you know, in my adult life, I've had one um, like long relationship. And that was from like, right when I got out of college to like when I turned 26, I think. And actually like after that breakup um, is when they reached out to me. Um, okay. And they actually reached out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I think it was a casting. <laughs> yeah, it was someone on the <laughs> casting team and it was, um, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, and I, I've like heard of the experiment before um, and was intrigued by it. Um, and obviously, you know, my, my intention is to, um, to like have a life partner, like a long-term relationship. Um, and I kind of just thought like, fuck it. Like, why not? You know, <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. I mean, I can't believe you're an aerospace engineer and mm -hmm. you were able to do the show. Like, did you have to take time off to do love is blind? Yeah, I did. That, that was difficult. Um, it's kind of funny because yeah. I took I don't know. It was, I had just started in a new role as like a satellite hardware engineer. Um, and, uh, I told my boss like right away, I'm like, Oh, I have to take four weeks off, you know, no context. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah. he's like, Oh, okay. Like I hope everything's okay. And then I think a year later the show comes out. Um, and like, so obviously like my, the demographic I work with is like predominantly like white male, Males. like in their third, yeah. like late twenties, thirties, so I was, I was under the pressure and I was just like, okay, like no one's, gonna, no one watches it. Like, you yeah. know, where I work, like nobody watches it. And yeah. like, when it comes out, um, you know, I'm just at work and like, um, it, and then, so just a couple of like, um, my team members like start talking to me about it. They're like, oh, like, oh, like I, like my girlfriend, like saw it. Like she, she like is asking about it. And then like my boss who sits next to me now, he like turns to me. <laughs> and like he's like oh yeah what about oh, no. that and like it turns out like he watches it also um oh my just, gosh it, it's just so i would have never guessed dude that's exactly what happened to me too at work i was like there's no chance that any of my coworkers would watch it and then randomly be <laughs> they'd just be like you know bouncing around it or like talking around the subject and like yeah. random people would just message me online too and being like hey like i saw you on a tv show i'm like i've never spoken to you ma'am like what did you come like at work them? people would yeah. message you yeah that just, was like, like me too yeah yeah it was kind of crazy how many yeah. people just like found out across my company. So I used mm -hmm. to work for like a company that had like 250,000 employees. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't know how word got out, like literally day two of the, our season coming out, season two, yeah. like yeah. I felt like half my company knew. And I was like, yeah. what? You're like, what? So yeah. it was very interesting, like how many people watch it and you just don't expect it. Wait, so when you took time off for the show, you didn't tell them you were filming Love is Blind? No, I didn't give it any context. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Did you, <laughs> Natalie? I didn't. I don't think I ever said it was Love is Blind, but I said, like, I am filming show. a reality TV show. And yeah. because, like, how else am I going to explain? I only took two weeks off um, because the I only needed the time off for the pods in Mexico. And then you could work um, for the remainder of, of filming. Um, but still, yeah, I was, like, really honest. But I don't think anyone bad and I or like thought it was going to be love is blind. <laughs> Wendy, to bring it back into the pods, tell us about your connections. Like was Jimmy your only one or who did you connect with? Ooh, let me think. I just got to like rejog my memory real quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. So I think um, the people I resonated most um, or the people that I talked to, to the very end, because, you know, we have like five days and, um, I'm sure your listeners like know how it works at this point, but, um, so 
people I talked to until the very end were Jimmy, um, Paul, and then actually um, Chris doesn't have a lot of airtime, but I talked a lot with him also. And then um, I also really loved uh, Zach and I's conversation. Um, we had a lot of great um, banter back and forth. Um, yeah, those were my main connections. And it's interesting because like they were all so different. Like, yeah, I think what was the most like recalibrating about that experience for me is you never have like that many, you're never like have that many like deep connections, like just to put juxtapose next to each other. Right. So it's like, mm -hmm. and because that like usually doesn't happen um, in the real world, because I don't know, like no one has time to like form deep connections with like four potential romantic partners at once. Or, you know, in this case, like 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It 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 almost so so what was recalibrating for me is um I was like the the ver was how like the variety of like connection you like the breadth and variety of connection like you could feel um because they were all so different. Yeah, and that's no, like I totally like get that. Yeah, and it's like a different version of you too that shows up for each connection yeah. too. And it's so, yeah, it's crazy how certain people bring out certain characteristics in you or a certain type of your personality. Yeah. It's so, it's totally so funny because, yeah, like, so this guy that I'm like currently seeing, I told him that, um, I'm like, oh, like, do you, do you find that, you know, pe different people you see romantically, like bring out different sides of you? And then he said, wow, I, <laughs> he made this comment. He was like, Wow, I like was pretty sure you weren't psychopath. <laughs> but it's so true though. Like it's yeah. true. Yeah. And then like you start getting this, um, it's almost like you're like, do I only like this person because they bring out this part of me that I like? And they're um, mm -hmm. you know, there's this theory, there's like this concept in psychology. By the way, I like nerd about I nerd out about anything like psychology based. I think me I too. Probably, oh my god, I probably like, yeah, I went to school for psychology at this point. Yeah. Um, but there's this, uh, there's this concept called like, ex like the theory of like, it's like a self expansion theory. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I read about that, I'm like, oh shit, like, are we really only picking part? Like, uh, there's like a good and bad to it because like it, it's a good, it's kind of a good concept in a way that like, you know, you want to pick a partner who, um, you, you see the most potential for growth like mm -hmm. as a whole entity, like within the relationship, but also like as separate entities. But um, there's like a certain like narcissistic air of it yeah. where I'm like, am I like picking themselves because they like are growing, they're like expanding a part. I think um, that they're expanding a part of myself that like I like, you know? Yeah. 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 No, hundred percent. Yeah, or they're filling a hole in you that, um, <sighs> yeah, that you're missing. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But for example, like, I think with Jimmy, there was a lot of like emotional attraction involved. Like, I was like extremely emotionally attracted to him. Um, and then with Paul, it was more of like a psychological like attraction. It's crazy that you had this connection with Paul to the end because they didn't show it on the show. They just showed him, Amber, and Micah pretty much. Were you surprised that they didn't show you and Paul connecting in the pods considering you talked to him till the end of the pod experiment? Um, well, I think just by the mere quantity of like airtime they have to fill and like how much they want to show of like Paul's two main romantic connections. Um, I'm not too surprised um, just by the mere like efficiency of like cutting the film and needing to put all the components in there. So the audience um, can see, you know, the major scenes that will build this storyline up to um, when there's like the reveal or yeah. you know, mm -hmm. the aftermath. Yeah, there's thousands and thousands of hours of footage that mm -hmm. didn't get shown. Even us on our season, yeah. a lot of our stories weren't shown just because, like you said, just the mere amount of um, airtime there is. There's just not enough time yeah. to fill it. The reason why I asked is like I was curious because I actually got engaged. Um, I actually got proposed to by another <laughs> person when I was in the pods, and I was actually surprised that they didn't show. And he was really surprised as well because. 
I mean, it wasn't a big part of my entire storyline with Shane, um, but it was still like a big part of his. And I would say like significant when someone proposes to, you know, someone else in the pot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's always interesting, like what is chosen to be shown or not. Um, but, you know, you did go on a date with Paul after you and Jimmy had not worked out. So like, how did that come to be? So, so Paul and I, like, we had this like incredible, um, just like psychological attraction for each other, um, in the pods, almost to the point it was like a bit, we, we felt narcissistic because it was like, <laughs> it's like, wow, like, am I only feeling this because you're like me? Um, but we actually, uh, when he came back to Seattle, um, we reconnected and then um, we had to disconnect for a bit because, you know, his focus was on Micah and um, he needed to like see that through, right? Um, but, you know, after the wedding happened, um, we actually reconnected again. And it was just like a lot of talking. Um, Wait, Wendy, did you go on a date with him like while the show, while they were still filming? After they filmed, we did reconnect and um, mm -hmm. we hung out like quite a few times. Um, and we were also like talking a lot and like, yeah, so we, we, we reconnected in that way, um, which was really nice. What did you think about the other women in the pods? Because... We saw a lot of stuff go down, like, um, you know, as viewers. Um, but, you know, we just want to get your perspective on how it all went down. Luckily, like, I wasn't involved in any, like, love triangles or any of that. So maybe I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get any of that, like, negative energy directly. Um, mm -hmm. But I definitely, like, saw it happening. And, yeah. like, um, like, I was close to some of the cast members on the show who would, like, you know, like, vent to we'd like vent to each other about that um so i think i was i was seeing the negative energy happen like from a third perspective but i wasn't like involved with it um so yeah. i think i am lucky in that way because i don't know it's just like i i don't know like it's just something like we like obviously easier said than done but like we should be like tearing each other down like that right i don't know it it doesn't seem like yeah. the most respectful thing to do. Um, yeah. It sucks because I've been in the position where I completely hear what you're saying because all the women in the in the lounge on our season was very, very close. And then the show played. And then the person I thought I was the closest to was like doing things behind my back, but telling other things to my face. So like for me, yeah. the show was kind of like a reveal of like this woman was like fucking like lying to my fucking face and manipulating me in the pods. Mm -hmm. And so um not saying it was a tear down, but the, the show definitely changes things where you're like, wait a minute. And it makes you feel things where you're like, I put, I got along with this woman so well. And then I see her actions on the show where she was doing things behind my back or talking about me in the pods or doing things. And then you're like, why, and then it makes you like angry. And I think that's I'm what sorry. changes the dynamics of the women's cast. Cause like, yeah, yeah it's tough. But then at the same it's time, so it's cool. like, do these women, but then to your point of like, does it also, is the tear down necessary? Probably you know, and not. I, and I think as viewers too, it's tough because they don't see that BTS, you know, like what you've gone through. I really think about it kind of yeah. like a painting, you know, and it's yeah. like you're seeing like 10% of that painting, but you don't see the beauty of the entire picture because that's just how it works. And, you know, you get that 10%. And so it is interesting, the dynamics of all the relationships, you know, for sure. What did you think of your reveal with Jimmy? Because for us, for me personally, that was like one of still to this day, one of the best moments of my life. No. I would say I know it's See, not for I Natalie. Disagree. We for just spoke about is. this in our last episode. Yeah, it was one of the most awkward moments of my life. I was just like, hi, <laughs> or not, it, not because of my fiance, but because of the cameras and the like fact that it was fucking cameras like hovering over you. Oh, like, yes. <laughs> and then there's like some on top, like the, what is the drone? Yeah, and you're just drones. like, 
<laughs> You're getting I'm every mind. angle of me kiss. No, when I kissed him, I remember being like, this isn't every like angle. Like you could probably see like <laughs> every. Thank you. That was the best moment. When you said I it was the really. Best it's one of the top because of, of all of the emotions that I felt and I was like oh my god like I was so excited I was so nervous I was anxious yeah. but I was also like really looking forward to that moment because you connected with somebody and this is like your fiance now you know yeah. so and you really me, really really feel that way yeah well so how did it feel for you <laughs> it was a bit difficult for me to like match because it's the first time you're seeing um, you know, like the physical body yes. of the person, like, and what it was, what was most uh, difficult for me to put together was like, this was really surprising me, surprising to me, but like the way the person moves, I don't know why yes. it's like so important. <laughs> yes. Like, I think that part was like a bit like seeing the way they like move when they talk almost like, I don't even like that, that part was like the most difficult for me to like put together. Yeah. Like their hand gestures yeah, and like hand gestures, their mannerisms. Like the way they move their body when they talk. Mm. I'm like, oh, you were doing this across the wall. I didn't know that. This is so <laughs> weird to like actually. Why does, does Jimmy move his hands a lot when he talks? <laughs> Jim, Jimmy's an extremely energetic person. And, okay. you know, like <laughs> love that about him. But. <laughs> and you're trying to like calm I down. Say, like, I, have a preference. <laughs> I don't want to say I have a preference, but like. Mm -hmm. I think I prefer like people <laughs> people who like are like slower in their movements. I don't know. Like I, I don't know if that's just like a preference I'm pulling out of my ass, but like <laughs> it's like No, I get like, it. Just, I get what you're saying. Just, like I don't know. Like um like I didn't know there was Jimmy's like I didn't know there was mannerism yeah. preferences. <laughs> now yeah, I'm like real conscious. No, I'm like, totally am I moving is. too much? There totally <laughs> is. There's a mannerism preference. Um, no, I haven't. Like, I haven't heard it yeah. be said out like that, but that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a better way of saying that. But I'm yeah. objectively, like Jimmy is like a handsome guy. Um, but I think seeing him, it, it was just a bit difficult for me to put um, just like the physical embodiment to the voice. Uh, I wish mm -hmm. I could have been more like enthusiastic about it and accepting mm -hmm. of it. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I haven't like fully processed of like how I or reprocessed how I felt in that exact moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I don't think it was like uh, like happiness. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone processes like, it differently. So like I <laughs> yeah. think it was like joy. What's one word you would describe it as? Um. <sighs> <laughs> um interesting <laughs> okay it That's is it's one. definitely interesting going back to jimmy how did you end up getting engaged to him i think um it was like the depth of so i went through a lot of um I don't say like torment. I don't know if it's the right word, but I, I did go through a good amount of, um, I don't know if trauma is the right word either, mm -hmm. but I did go through, it was like, so the whole process of the five days, it was like an extremely like emotionally turbulent process. And I think because um, I have Jimmy there, like as my rock essentially, and he's like excellent um, at, like comforting. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think because I had him to talk to every day, it created a sense of like emotional closeness that like I had no, like, I don't want to say never like that. I haven't really like felt before. And that was like very novel to me. So it was, it was large in part of, um, like the emotional depth I was able to, and closeness I was able to experience with him as well as like, there was something about his like energy and charisma and like adventurousness, like open mindedness. God, are these mm -hmm. even words? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. That was yes. like very open mindedness to me as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. And yeah. then, so after your reveal, when did you find out you guys weren't being followed? So, hmm, how many details can I? So we we got back to our help hotel that night, and um, the what's her name? casting director maybe 
executive producer or someone, Mm -hmm. she uh, called me and the other two women that weren't going to be followed, like just like down to the courtyard. She's like, um, and then she gave a little speech and she was like, oh, like, by the way, like, as you know, we can't carry on everyone to Mexico. Um, So um, you like, so uh, you are like based on, um, she put it as like your storylines are too similar than what we've had in the previous seasons. Mm. Um, and therefore like, that's why we, we have chosen not to carry on your story. Um, were you surprised? Like, okay. Yeah. Were you surprised when you heard that? Like, how, what were you feeling? Well, like logically, you know, like I knew like they weren't going to carry all eight couples to Mexico. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, like yeah. obviously like there are some storylines they're not going to follow. Um, yeah. I think emotionally it was like a bit relieving to me, honestly. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. It, it, it was a relief. What do you mean that you were relieved? Were, were you like kind of done with filming or you didn't want to move on or? Yeah. I mean, I, I think me personally, um, like I, the, the intention behind like why I chose to like be part of this experience, like had been both fulfilled. Right. Um, yeah. So so there was that and um it was just i don't know like like being followed around like I, like i don't know if it was just me but like psychologically like being followed around of cameras all day um being in a lounge all day uh i mean it's strenuous like it was strenuous for me and like i think i was just yeah. like both like physiologically and psychologically and emotionally like just tired mm-hmm. um and when I found out, I'm like, okay, like, cause it was only gonna like, to some extent, like get more intense. Right. Yep. Yeah. Like, absolutely. You would can, literally can confirm validate, it does. Like, this person. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I was just like, okay, like I can, you know, go back home and just like decompress a bit. Which yeah. is nice. Ugh, I'm jealous no. because I actually asked for Shane and I not to be followed. I was just having same like you as having a really hard time um, mm-hmm. filming in the pods because you just don't get a break pretty much. Mm-hmm. And uh, you just feel like you're on and you're just like exhausted, like, you know, from dating all day, every day. Um, so I actually asked if we could drop out and they would choose another couple. And I didn't really get a choice, to be honest. I was just told yeah. I'm going. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. When you great. signed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I they were just the like, yeah, I mean, they were like very nice about it, but they were like, we really think like you should see it through. Like the experiment doesn't end mm-hmm. here. It's like, you know, the whole thing of, um, you know, having hard conversations mm. about, you know, essentially marriage that are kind of like pushed by producers that like guide yeah. you through those conversations, but also like them setting up meeting your parents, living together, all those things. So, um, and I knew that my fiance actually really wanted to do it. He was like, once I said I didn't, he was like, I would really like to. And so I was like, okay, let's, I mean, I'm not going to like push against it when it's, you you know, it's just my decision. Do you think there's maybe like a small part of you that maybe knew that it wasn't going to work out? I actually was like very gung ho about him from the very, very beginning. Um, it wasn't that because I told him before reveal. So even when I like knew I want to be with him um, on engagement, so it wasn't after reveal, I was just like, I can't like film anymore. I'm so just like, yeah, I'm so done. I'm so done doing my makeup every day. I'm so done doing my oh, hair every day for these damn hard, cameras. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I just want to, I was like, that's I just tough. want to like sleep in my own damn bed. Like yeah. that's it. So <laughs> I would love to say it's because I knew, but I think it was mostly like, it just wasn't for me like yeah, filming. That, it's just, that's oh, so funny not for me. because it's I weird. was the opposite. I realized that I do really well in high stress situations, like in very highly, like emotionally charged situations. I do. I was like, Oh, that. I, yeah. I was like, I can handle this. So I was yeah. kind of the opposite of you guys. <laughs> oh, so it's funny. like um, more, when it gets more stressful, you get more calm and like, yeah. Like I'm able to navigate and help people through those situations. Like that's just yeah, my, that's amazing. my choosing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> When you were being told that your story wasn't being followed and you saw that Ava um, story was also not being followed. So she got engaged um, as well. Mm -hmm. Did it occur to you that both of you were um, 
Asian women not being followed on the show? When we were air quote, like cut, um, I didn't really like think about that. Like and have that same reaction. Like, Oh, like we're East Asian. Like, us. like, I think I, I went into the experiment with the intention um, to like form connection. Right. And like, I did get that. So it wasn't like, I guess just my mind wasn't really there. Um, yeah. And if you, if, if someone like brought it up to me again, like you are and like asked me to think about it, it's like, I, I don't want it to make it about, like, I don't want to make it about culture. Like, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. like, yeah, like, I don't want to like finger point and be like, oh, that's why, like, it, it's like pointing out a fact we don't even know exists and like making it a bigger thing than it needs to be, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, totally makes sense. We were personally disappointed just because. You rarely see Asian women on reality TV shows, especially really popular one. Obviously, Deep D and I um, were part of the main cast for season two. Um, I, I think um, it, it's tough because, like, you hope that it's shown and that you could share like the cultural aspect too. I think that, um, and just normalizing seeing people with our True, features. Yeah like on mm-hmm. TV. So, um, but you're right. You know, one of the things I actually did want to ask you about is, so uh, the creator of the show, Chris mm-hmm. Colin, told People Magazine um, when asked why he didn't follow certain couples who were engaged on your season, he said, we're looking to tell the most genuine, most authentic stories that we can. And that's really the criteria mm-hmm. criteria by which we judge what stories we're going to follow. So what do you think about his statement? I felt like he was essentially saying that the couples that weren't followed, which included you mm-hmm. and Jimmy, um, weren't authentic or genuine. I think it's a very, like, carefully worded statement, um, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, maybe that could have been a factor. Like, they watched couples at the reveal, and they kind of, like, was like, oh, that one's not going to work out. Like, I can see them doing that. Um, so maybe that could have been a factor, like based on a subjective judgment. Um, but I really don't know like what's going on in like the producers and the creators like mind. And I like obviously don't want to like speak for them either. Um, yeah, I thought that was kind of BS. Yes. Go ahead. There- I feel like there's another assumption or another side to it, too, is like, you know, he said the most genuine and the most authentic. That doesn't mean all the stories mm. weren't. It's just the the ones that were the most authentic. They chose them. Well, um, what do you think about think Zach about and Irina then? Like <laughs> they had the one of the worst reveals I've ever seen on Love is Blind. Yeah. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't true. I don't see Chris yeah, looking at that and be like, true. that's an authentic, a genuine couple. <laughs> Or, you know, they thought that was like the most, uh, there's going to be a story there. It's like, let's see how that plays out. But no, I know it can be interpreted in many ways, which is. Yeah, the choices were interesting. Yeah. 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 But well then, okay. So bringing it back, right. I really want to know about this. Like what transpired between you and Jimmy? You guys are engaged now. You did your reveal. And now um, you guys have found out that you're not being followed. So like, what were your next steps? Like what happened? Oh, um, so we literally, they were like, okay, we have an air, we have like a flight book for you to go back to Seattle like the next morning. And that is literally mm-hmm. what happened. It was, yeah. um, it's like me, Ava, Monica, Jimmy, uh, JP. And it's hard I'm trying to remember. <laughs> That's okay. Hold on. Was that the I think Monica part? got engaged to Jackie's Josh. Current Josh. Boo. Oh my Josh. God, yeah. So so we literally just had a flight in the in the next morning and we all met up at the airport and flew home. That's so fucking jarring, right? Like you just you <laughs> yeah. just yeah. each other. Like yeah. in this like magical, like curated um <laughs> like atmosphere and now you're like at the fucking airport like, uh, yeah you know? what a change in dynamic know, right? like, okay now we're okay what's up? Like, but like, like what, was, what was your conversations like with jimmy like were you guys like okay we're gonna stay engaged we're gonna yeah. let's date like what was your mindset so i think personally um like jimmy and i like still have and like had like a very positive reception like towards each other um, mm-hmm. So I don't know, we were excited to just go back to Seattle and like take things at our own pace and just like date at a normal pace and see like where things went, right? 
Um, so, you know, like we sat next to each other on the plane and like, we we're really excited to see each other at the airport. And there's just like a general positive reception. I can't say the same about like the other couples. Mm -hmm. Um, but which we'll find out later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at least that was like how like Jimmy and I unfolded like after the reveal and, um, when we like met each other at the airport. Yeah. So did you just decide to date instead of staying engaged? Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think about how that unfolded. Also like want to be careful here. Cause I don't want to like disrespect Jimmy either. Um, I think for a little bit, um, but there was just like a point for me where I just like knew it wasn't going to work out. Um, and I like still wanted to try, but it's still like, I mean, we did try, um, yeah. for, for months. Um, but I think there were just aspects that I couldn't like ascertain, like within the pods that, um, that were revealed to me, like in the real world, um, mm -hmm. that made me, uh, feel that you know, it, it wasn't going to work out, but, um, I still Did you feel that like when you initially saw him or like again, or like kind of where did that feeling come from of like, this isn't going to work out type of thing? I think there was a seed there, um, in the beginning and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And I'm mm. like, Hey, this, this isn't going to go away. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you, um, if like, say for example, you guys did get followed, do you think that you guys have, would have like potentially stayed together or even gotten married? Because, you know, Natalie and I talked about this is like the mm. part of the experience that really bonds you is yeah. the after the pods, you know, because you're going through, you're meeting each other's families. Again, we talked about this, um, you know, you get seeds planted on like really talking about your relationship in depth and, you know, working on it essentially. So like, do you think that if you had gotten followed, would you have gotten married or stayed together longer? Do you we think? talked about this? Like, it's really hard to say. Um, so like, I remember Jimmy and I were having a conversation about this and he said like, we, we would have gotten married if we like were, um, if we had carried through with the rest of it. It's so hard to say, like, I'm not sure, I guess. I, I like, yeah. I know it's an ambiguous answer, but I, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, do you, do you ever wish you had the chance to go through the experiment now seeing it play out on TV, like for the other cast members? Um, that's like a hard no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I no love that me. you're so sure like, about it. <laughs> Who are you closest to today, Wendy? Like from the season? It's really sad for me to say, but like I almost had to like mentally like disconnect a little bit. Um, yeah. It's just like, it's a lot. Last question for you though. Like what's next for you in life? Like, you know, what are you doing today? And like, what are your goals, dreams, next steps? Aspirations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I think I'm just trying like as of now I'm just trying to be like as present as possible oh, um, I love that yeah and just yeah. like oh it's gonna sound so cliche like truly fall in love with like what is happening at each present moment um yeah oh that yeah. is so sweet <laughs> oh, thank we you so that. much Wendy that was so inspiring actually I love that that was great. But, but we're so glad that we were able to talk to you and learn more about your story and kind of this likewise. untold story. Yeah. So we really appreciate your time. And this was such a fun conversation. Please come back anytime. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. We appreciate Thank it. You. JP Schultz, welcome to Out of the Pods. You were also engaged on Love is Wine season four. Um, and you got engaged to Ava, but you weren't followed by the show. So we're really excited to hear more about your story, what really happened and how you felt watching the season. But before we do that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to say, I'm so thankful for this opportunity of you guys bringing me on here. Um, oh, thank you. Has, Welcome. It for me to be able to come on such a great podcast with you guys and be able to kind of speak my truth and talk about everything. Um, 
but yeah, my name is JP Schultz, uh, Joshua Paul Schultz. Um, well, I'm going the whole federal name already, but uh, <laughs> I love it. I live here in Seattle, um, North Seattle, Greenwood area. Uh, I do property management for a living. I also coach youth football. Um, oh, very and, cool. Uh, yeah. I, uh, you know, I'm a pretty simple guy up here in Seattle, you know, like I, I go to work, come home, go to the gym, like very, very <laughs> regular up here, just having a good time, enjoying the summer. I love that. Um, we ask everybody who comes on the pod, how did you get on Love is Blind season four? I got a random DM uh, that threw me off at first. I was like, I was, I've been <laughs> thrown off. I was like, okay, like I've gotten some fake ones before. I, I know you guys yeah. probably have like, you're like, okay. But then she messaged me again the next day and was like, I know you probably think this is fake, blah, blah, blah. But like, look me up on like, <laughs> IBDM or something. So I looked it up and she had been on a bunch of different shows. I was like, oh. And so I went through with the 10 different interviews and the psych tests and all the stuff that they do. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> it is, it is, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's quite the process. Um, but yeah, it all started with just a, a DM. I think I posted a gym pic and <laughs> some <laughs> replied back, said we think you'd be a great fit and yep. You know, we already said that you got engaged to Ava, but how did that connection come to be on the show? I mean, as you guys know, it, it starts with um, everyone. It's, it's, the, it's speed dating, you, yeah. you go you meet everybody for the short time. You make a list that you have to try to remember all the things. It's very intense at first. So the first day, you know, she stood out um, for a few different reasons. Um, and we did have a connection from the jump. I had a connection with a few other girls as well. Um, a, a few other women as well. And uh, it <laughs> it just it started to become something that like we just clicked on a whole lot of things. We had a whole lot in common. Um, she's very, very, very resilient, like her story. Um, what she's been through. Uh, she was adopted. Uh, she, she's been through a lot. And for, where, for her to be where she's at um, professionally in her career um, and everything, it's, it's, it's extremely impressive. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a, lot to, a lot to love about Ava. And I definitely, like, I, no questions asked, fell for her um, in the pods along with a few of the other connections at first. But yeah, it mm -hmm. then became to her. Who were the other women that you connected with? Um, Micah and Chelsea were my interesting. Oh. Yeah, that's kind of not been talked about um, really. Mm -hmm. Like on any, I, I honestly haven't wanted to talk about it much for multiple. I, for Chelsea's married, like in Kwame, I love Kwame to death. Um, so like the last thing, you know what I mean? No reason to bring any of that up yeah. uh, mm -hmm. necessarily. But yeah, the other connections were Chelsea and Micah. Um, those were my my you know, final three, you know, how, you know, how it goes towards the yeah, yeah. seven, eight and all that. Um, yeah. Yeah, they, didn't that any of our, they didn't air any of our other connections either, really. So it's, it's, it. so, <laughs> it's so wild. Like, I, I don't need to tell you guys once again, but like, yeah, to mm -hmm. see something, just knowing some of the stuff that wasn't aired, it's mm -hmm. like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were, were there like, were you surprised that, you know, your connections with them weren't air considering that Micah and Chelsea were main cast members or, you know, what were kind of your thoughts, like not seeing your story play out? So like, like I, I was ready for anything, um, but it definitely did once it's aired and you don't see any of it. Um, it, it was, it was, it was a little wild just to be mm -hmm. honest, you know, it's not like I, I prepared myself for anything. Uh, but then to like, know this is going to sound probably not how I want to sound, but just knowing that like, if I wasn't there, stuff wouldn't have happened the way it happened. Um, mm. And so to not see any of that side of it is, you know, it's just like, it's, I'm okay with it. I'm at peace with it. It's all good, but it definitely is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's an experience. I'll say that. I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, you have a lot of mixed emotions, I'm sure, because like you're happy for your castmates and your friends, but also like you've been a, par a big part of the process too. So it's like, it's kind of disappointing not to see um, it kind of like being told, like the story being told, I guess, but that's yeah, just assuming and, I'm feel what you're feeling, but. No, you, you, you couldn't have said it better. And, and to the point that I haven't gone on. So there's a lot of people asking me to like, tell my story on and, and, and different things, but like, I kind of, I, I didn't want to and stuff just because 
it wasn't aired and and I, I i knew that i wouldn't be able to like reach everybody but i was i mean blessed with this opportunity um <laughs> to the point that like yeah absolutely um uh, that's exactly how I feel, Deep D. It's, it's, you <laughs> nailed it on the head. <laughs> was there anything else, you know, like any juicy stories in the pods that ever made TV <laughs> that you can share with us? Ooh, look at you, Chai. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have a few that are pretty juicy that we were yeah. shocked didn't make TV on our, on our season. Um, yes, <laughs> short answer. There was definitely some juiciness that was left out. Uh, I'll say, you know, I guess both Chelsea and Micah and I's breakup, it, it both ended in strong tears. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. There was strong connections. Uh, just like you, you guys, I, I keep saying this, I'm sorry, but like, you know how it is. Like in there, it's like everything is just expedited to where you're talking about things with these women that you usually wouldn't talk about until you're on like your 12th date with someone. You know what I mean? Or like you, mm -hmm. until you really kind of get, but in this experience, you it's it's all expedited um mm -hmm. and so we're getting definitely you know trauma bonding that's part mm -hmm. of it too but like there's it's there's these connections that yeah like you know that are, that are strong and so yeah it was um without any specific i guess details or anything it was a it was a lot when it when it ended with both of them it's like months of dating in those pods because you're constantly talking without any distractions you're like you know primary focus is to fall in love but um, so you're engaged to Ava finally after, um, all this time of dating. So what did it feel? How did it feel seeing her for the first time in person? It was, it was a lot. Um, like you both know the, the night before the reveal, uh, all you have is your thoughts of what they've been telling you these last 10 days. Um, and everything that you guys have talked about and you have these like, thoughts in your head of what they're going to look like or what this side or the other, what they're going to act like, how they're going to be with you, like how they're going to kiss, how they're going to, all this stuff. You're thinking about all yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so that morning of, wake up, pretty sure I had a mimosa in the men's quarters. It was just <laughs> uh, talking to a few of the boys um, that also were made it to that point um, as well. They were about to do theirs. Uh, and yeah, I'll just never forget. It was just an overwhelming emotion. Like when you get into that room, you're in your tux, feeling all good. Uh, knowing the cameras are rolling, like while you're standing there walking around this room for like 15 minutes all awkwardly and just like trying to make sure you look okay. And just like, it's, you're thinking about everything. Like absolutely, it, I, I, yeah. I've never been in a situation like that, obviously. But I mean, like mm -hmm. the type of just like mental almost warfare you're going through with yourself. It's just crazy. Um, yes. But then you get to the, you get to the wall. Um, and they tell you to stand at the wall. And I just remember like, she stood there, you can kind of like see the silhouette a little bit. It's mm -hmm. all dramatic and whatnot. And <laughs> yeah. then uh, it opens up. And I, I remember just seeing like, all the lights, all the cameras, like it was just crazy just like a crazy just yeah. like, just like wild <laughs> and yeah. then i see her she looked absolutely gorgeous she really really did look beautiful um mm -hmm. and that's i could see that from when it first opened and we got closer gave her a big hug um and a big kiss we were we were vibing like it was a, it was good like at first mm -hmm. it was everything was good um during the reveal uh yeah. we went back and sat and like her little section um, <laughs> during the reveal. I was saying some, like we were, we were even talking like sexually and stuff. We were talking crazy. Like we were like, <laughs> like yeah, we were all, we were ready to go to Mexico. We were ready. I'll yeah. say that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. It was, it was an amazing experience. Um, yeah. And an experience I'll never forget. I'll definitely, definitely say that. Uh, just that initial just opening is like something yeah. that I'll never forget that. So wait, Natalie fights me on this, but I always say it's one of my top moments still. And she's like, really? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> but I loved I, it. I'm so awkward. I mean, <laughs> Deep Tea says it's one of the top moments in her I life. And I was like, at the it's time, great. it feels great. And then you look back and you're like, that was I don't know. I, I talked about this with Wendy, but I was like, you're getting like angles of me kissing, like from 40 different cameras. And you're just like, oh, 
I'm like, <laughs> I'm I like saw, this is the worst. I saw both of yours. Both of you guys looked amazing. And I'll just say, I'm glad. That, I mean, honestly, I, I would have, if mine would have got aired, yeah, I probably would have looked dumb as hell. So I probably would have looked you, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you kidding me? I was like making out for 10 minutes of that 20 minutes. I was like, my uh, mom is going to see this. Like, <laughs> what was I thinking? My lipstick was smeared everywhere. I was like, bro, what hey, are you doing? They were, they were just having us pent up in there for however many days it was. Like, yeah, the first time we see somebody, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Can I tell you something? I saw <laughs> this video that like a new site made about the top most awkward moments on love is blind season two and my kiss with shane at reveal was on that video and they're like Ugh. they like did a soundtrack over it of us kissing and you could hear it was like Ugh, uh. and oh i was like my oh my gosh, gosh. stop oh my gosh. so yeah it's like it haunts me forever it wasn't that. I was like, I... I'll have to run it back. I'm gonna check TikTok. Too. <laughs> yeah, we'll send it to no, you. I'm do sure it. I'll find it for you. <laughs> no, there's plenty. I'm sure there's plenty of TikToks so people are like, "Ew," <laughs> when it happened. But um, haters. The haters. That's all they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Well, you ended up finding out you actually weren't going to Mexico. So, like, how did you find out you weren't being followed, and were you surprised? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I was very surprised. Um, they. After the reveal, they send you back to your living quarters. Um, and like I said, mine was in the morning. Uh, and so I had the reveal, um, had the interview after. Uh, and I will say, like, I guess just want to say, like, the interview after did get kind of deep. That's when I, like, I had just a, a moment of, like, wow, like, like I'm, I'm engaged. Like, I just met my fiance like it was a moment of where even like during that during that interview my producer was like jp are you okay like kind of said it and it caught me off guard because i had told him everything was good and it was and he like had seen something kind of on my face i think just like of i was not anything that had to do with her necessarily it just was like there was a lot and it was yeah. a moment of like after the like the lights had turned off and you're just in this interview and you like finally take a breath i i think he just saw this like Wow, just I don't know. It was it was crazy. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just say that because it leads into then that whole after that, I'm sitting there in the quarters just thinking literally from like, like 11 to 11, like to where they were bringing they brought us food, but like 11am to 11pm um, was sitting in the the room. And then they finally call me. And they say, well, call the phone I had, we didn't have our phones, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. but and tell me to come down. And then there was everybody there, like Chris, all of the people were there um, and kind of explained to us and a few others that were there that they weren't going to follow our our path. Um, it was very respectful. It wasn't, you know, it was just kind of they explained it just like they have publicly anywhere to where mm -hmm. Netflix chooses, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they, they choose the stories based on what they think is right. I mean, there's, there's a reason that their show is doing so well, like they, they're, they're picking the right people, you know? So mm -hmm. um, that was in its own way, that was, that was a lot as well, you know, when you kind of mm -hmm. you go through all of that and then you're told not just, you know, not that you're just going to Mexico, but that this girl that you just engaged, I'm sorry, this woman that you just proposed to, um, you're no longer gonna have the plan of like the funded, wedding of getting all of your people out there and them supporting it and being able to pay for a wedding at the end of the month. And so that was like my main thought, to be honest, of just mm -hmm. like, damn, like, what is she thinking? Like, and also too, mm -hmm. they didn't give us our phones yet. So I can't, I didn't get to yeah. call her or talk to her. So I'm just over here. That was that night. I did not sleep at all. Like, I'm not even yeah. joking. I, I think I, I fell asleep for like 30 minutes before the flight the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, they, it was it was a, it was a very respectful um and good meeting they, they just were like you know they, like i said they they just kind of broke it to us that you know we're not going to follow uh and like i mentioned i got nothing but love for the producers um mm -hmm. chris everybody so 
Yeah. You know, actually, speaking of Chris Cohen, he actually did an interview um, with People magazine. And this is his exact quote. He said, we're looking to tell the most genuine, most authentic stories that we can. And that's really the criteria by which we judge what stories we're going to follow. And so, you know, what did what do you think about that statement? Yeah, I, I try not to take that personally. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like at, at first you're like, oh, like what? You didn't think I was genuine? Like I yeah. go through all that stuff. Like, but I think it's, you know, you could you could twist that a lot of ways. And, and I think that he's mm-hmm. just being honest. That he 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 wanted to choose what they thought was a genuine connection. And I also, like you just heard me say, um, I don't know the talks that went down after the producer saw me kind of off a little in that um, interview right after the, the reveal. So I, I don't know. I haven't spoke with him um, since mm-hmm. he hasn't talked to me um, or reached out. So I don't necessarily know the conversations that went on or, or what mm-hmm. he necessarily meant by that. Um, but it's all love. And I was genuine. So it's, it's, yeah. it's like, you know, do you, do you feel like, do you feel like you were just like overwhelmed? Um, in the moment, like thinking about getting married and all the thing that's to come, like what were, why were you so anxious or were you anxious? Like when well, you, was, like right after the reveal. I was very, yeah, anxious as I was, like I said, it was, it was a mm-hmm. lot, I keep saying this, but it was a lot of things. It was, I was anxious. Yeah. I was scared a little mm-hmm. bit of just, I mean, everything. Uh, yeah. It, once in a lifetime feeling of just like, <laughs> yeah. uh, Overwhelming, overwhelming Mm -hmm. emotion of so many sorts. I was going to ask you, like, you know, now that you guys were told you're going home, you get on the flight, like, tell us a little bit about what happens between you and Ava. Where did the relationship go? So we wake up um, that next day after after I said, like, I didn't sleep that whole after the reveal. They don't don't Mm -hmm. give you your phone, even even after they tell you that you're not going to get followed. They don't give you your phone. So you're just in your hotel room with your thoughts. Um, and I remember waking up, they give us our phone at like, it was like eight, eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, she had got her phone back a little later. She DM'd me um, like, just like, hi, oh my gosh, excited to see you. They didn't I, even give you guys phone numbers. <laughs> no, no, we had, yeah, exactly. We had to go. Yeah, so you had to DM. <laughs> we had to DM each other. Um, and so... We we're like so excited to see each other. We, I get to the airport first. The men do. Um, and am I am I allowed to talk about who was there with me? Yeah, yeah. Um, Everyone knows it's like public knowledge. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it was. There was other. There was other people there. Jimmy, and I. Were, I remember we were sitting together, and the girls weren't there yet. We were texting. Like I was, was like, can't wait to see you. Everything was okay here. Like everything was fine. I was. I was. I was very excited to see her, even though. There was a lot on my mind, like we both talked about. There was a lot that needed to be talked about. Um, and she gets there with about, literally the, the plane was boarding. Like people were already getting on the plane. And like she's gets with the other, with the other women, she gets there to the terminal. Um, and we had like a little bit of time, you know, you know how they board before, like you had a little time to get on, but like not a lot. Like we had like 10 minutes where we were not in line together at the airport so after the reveal not on camera the only other time that i had any any interaction with her was at this airport around a bunch of people and not in a space to really have like any type of serious conversation um at least i thought respectfully that it wasn't the place um and so we talked initially when she got there and i i pretty much said that to her that i really felt that like We need to talk about some things, obviously. Like, I didn't say it just like that. We need to talk. Like, I I was just more Mm -hmm. so like, you know, there's a lot we need to discuss. Um, This is crazy. Like, just know, like, like, I'm I'm feeling probably the same way you're feeling. This is a like, I'm here for you. Like, whatever we need to talk about, like, don't worry, everything's good and stuff. Like, we'll we'll figure it out when we get back to Seattle. And then it was just kind of at that moment, there was like a little moment of, she was thrown off. I don't know. I don't even know what it was, but it, the, the vibe was changed when, when I said that I felt that we kind of need to discuss some things. I was just trying to be real. I wasn't, I wasn't ending things right there. I was just telling her like, 
I, I want to talk about some things. Like we have a whole lot we need to talk about. Um, and that conversation was fine while we were in line. We stood in line together. Everything was okay. Like I, I gave her a kiss on the cheek before she went to her seat that was, we weren't sitting together. They didn't put us in a seat together. Um, and I was in the way back. And I remember, oh my goodness, I left this part out. I, I'm so sorry, I, I left this part out. This was an important part. Mm -hmm. But Wendy uh, was on a call with one of her family members and they had asked her like, are you still engaged? Or like, are, oh, so you're engaged, blah, blah, blah. And then she says out loud, like around a bunch of people, like, Ava, are you and JP still engaged? Like, are you guys gonna like still be engaged? And like Ava looks at me and I was just like, yeah, like, cause it was in front of like 20 people. I didn't wanna just, you know, like that wasn't the time to just be like, well, there's some things we need to talk about. And like different, like I, I just, I said, yeah. And you know, I didn't wanna be rude in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't wanna like, I don't know. You could imagine how that caused a scene. Like, I'm not joking. Probably 10, 15 people heard Wendy say this out loud, like six feet across the, the dang airport. <laughs> And I just was in the moment. I remember turning red. I was just like, yeah, like, yeah, no, we're for sure. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> and fast forward to where I get to my seat. She's in her seat. They tell us that it's going to be like 20 minutes for some repairs or something or other. And I could see her like on her phone and making calls and stuff. And at that moment, I had just like a, like, just an overwhelming feeling of just like, fuck, just like, I need to like, I was just so scared that she was telling her all her parents and just everybody that like how good things were and like, we're gonna be good and engaged at the end of the month and or we're gonna be married at the end of the month still. And like, there was so much that I just, it was, I didn't want her to have to recall everybody and be like, oh, actually like, it's a little adjusted. Like, so at that moment, I'm not, I'm not proud of it. I, I'm not, it's, it's a very unique situation. And I felt that it was what was best at the time. But I sent her a text when I was sitting back in my seat, basically just saying it's it's on my Instagram. I posted it because I was getting killed for it. But yeah, I saw that actually. <laughs> it was wild. Um, but funny. essentially to where I told her that there's a lot that needs to get talked about when we get back. Um, for now, I'd like to call off the engagement and just date when we get back to Seattle. Um, that I thought the timeline of which getting married at the end of the month. You know what? Call me broke, whatever you want. But I couldn't afford a, a wedding and flying everybody out there. You know what I mean? Like I was good, but that would have, we ain't going in debt to start our marriage. That's not, that's not smart. We're not going to just do that. So like, I wasn't financially prepared to just pay for a whole wedding that, you know, she deserved it, that, that I want to happen at the end of the month. Um, and it was just, I, I, so yeah, that text message didn't go that deep into it, but I mean, I could read it too, if you wanted me to. But yeah, it, I'll let me set the stage for our viewers. So essentially what happened is around the time season four had premiered, Ava publicly via her social media accused you for doing the show for fame. And she said on her Instagram stories that you ended the engagement after seeing each other at the airport at, at after the reveal um, and showed like a bunch of text messages, kind of really you saying like we need to take a step back, you know, before you call your friends and family, telling them that you're engaged. So I guess, you know, what's your side of the story on that? Um, did you end the engagement? You know, what happened with you and Ava? Yeah. Um, so like I said, with that situation, I, I tried to just be as transparent as possible because with all of this, I knew that not everybody would agree. Uh, I knew that everybody would have an opinion about it, but it truly wasn't from a place of love that I was trying to not have her go through these multiple conversations with her loved ones about this very unique, crazy experience. And when it has to do with marriage and like telling, oh, yes, I'm engaged. And then she'd have to call back and oh, well, just kidding. Like, you know, things are yeah. you know, yeah. work on things or things are. Um, and so I guess I'll just read the text that I sent her. Yeah, um, good. It, this was while I was sitting on the plane. It was I'm only texting you this. Because, this is what I said. I said, I'm only texting you this because I don't want you to tell your parents or anybody close confusing things. And I also couldn't do it with everyone around. But I do think we should put off the engagement part and date when we are back. I feel so bad, 
but just going through a lot more than I thought with this situation at the moment. Still love you, and I mean that with all of me. I said, I really want to talk. See you tomorrow if you're down. Doesn't have anything to do with you. I was like, this shit kills me. And that was the last, like, that, that was the text um, mm -hmm. that I sent her on the plane. And then she yeah. did, she did respond, uh, I believe. Yeah, she did. She did respond on the, on the plane. Um, she said, I appreciate you being honest with me. I know it's very overwhelming right now. So take the time you need. What you said is a shock to me though. And I need some time to process that and everything. Thanks for being understanding. I said, of course, I'm really sorry. This wasn't the end we both wanted to this chapter, but I don't look at this as something sad. I'm trying to just really process it all without having the second part of this experience. And then she said, what do you mean second part of this experience? And at that point, we talked at the airport for a little bit. Um, I guess just to touch on what I meant, I already kind of touched on what I meant by the second part of the experience. Um, mm -hmm. I told that to you guys. That's what was very hard for me too, was just like not having all that we talked about to be able to go through with her and learn and go through the second part of the experiment. So, yeah. Um, and uh, Natalie and I have talked about this too, is the second part of this experiment is the part that really bonds you. And, you know, you have guidance on how to navigate the relationship from your producers. And they're kind of like setting you up on dates and like having you talk about certain things. And when you're just like free for all, um, you're kind of left with so much emotion and trying to navigate it yourself. And so I think based on what you just said it feels like you're just trying to process everything in like a very intense time and, and just in my point of view in a realistic manner like just in a real mm -hmm. life like oh like you, we're not funded anymore by netflix we're not getting dates set up we're not getting our parents flown out we're not getting we're not doing all this so like i was just trying to be realistic and i was ready as hell to date her like i was ready to like make it work mm -hmm. and get back i was still on the same mindset like let me fall in love please yeah like, like, I mean, yeah, I was, not... at that point i was in love i was like let me let me find my wife let me let me get married like i'm still absolutely ready to get married it's just it was at that moment there was a obvious disconnect of she absolutely wanted to follow the same timeline as the cast members that were getting followed and she made that clear to me and she said that in person mm -hmm. and i just at that point just like it was it was tough to deal with because it didn't seem realistic to me and at that point i just yeah yeah okay that makes sense why yeah. you kind of like ended the engagement part of she still want to follow you know having a wedding you know by um like after the you know i think it's three weeks after we like leave the pods because i was i was gonna ask like why not just stay engaged and you know just kind of date but you know i think it's different when you kind of like or outside of the experiment, you know, it's hard to fund those things yourself, like you said. And Natalie, that, that honestly, I'm glad you brought that up because that that was one of my bigger things that I truly regretted in that text message. I shouldn't <laughs> have said put off the engagement. Um, I think that kind of gave her this like right away. She's like, oh, he's not for it. Like he's not. And I just didn't mean it like I wanted to end things. I just. Mm -hmm wanted to go on a more realistic approach but you are damn right that doesn't mean that i needed to end the engagement you know things could have stayed and i could have dated and whether we found out that it might not have worked later so yeah i i, I 100 take accountability for that I, I wish that i would have worded it different for sure yeah if you and ava were followed on the show do you think you like how do you think you and her would have ended up do you think there was potential to get married or do you think that you would have probably separated at the altar or before the altar with all i know now um no way we're getting married and no shot i could be married to her um just with <laughs> she's treated me pretty poorly um since uh i got nothing but love for her i'm not bashing nothing like that i got nothing mm -hmm. but love for her but just being on you can just go on her social media she still has it up that she's bashing me um yeah for a lot in what way in what way can you go into some details on that yeah like she she accused me of like when the show dropped and there was this there was this um i think her name is reality ashley and she's like she makes tiktok she has instagram like she has a whole bunch of stuff she follows reality tv and she made a random one of me that was like oh we need jp in perfect match season two and just made it as a nice little jet like she thought that I, she liked my vibe she thought liked me enough to to make a little 
little uh, TikTok about me that said it was just a clip that I was like complimenting Paul. It was just a funny clip. And Ava tied that into, I, she, well, she said this literally in her comments. She thought that I reached out to her to make that, like wanted, like I told her to make that for me and post it. Oh, and I, could, no. I laughed so hard when I initially saw that. I was just like, <laughs> what the? <laughs> no. um, but I also too, just don't know where that could come from. I, Cause we talked about this a little off camp, but like that wasn't even a show when I got cast, I was with, I didn't even know about that. I, and, and then think of this, how in my mind, like, why would I go on love is blind to try to get on another show? Like, Mario, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like what? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And then especially when I knew that I wasn't going to be followed, they ain't just going to pick little old JP to go to perfect match. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know how this stuff goes. I'm not done. So that yeah. was just such a, like, what, like, what are you trying to do? Yeah. Right? Like, why are you trying to make up a storyline? That's just not the truth. Can I, I say, I feel like um, it comes from a place of hurt and I'm, I'm not trying to speak for her. This is just my assumption or what I, how I view it is I think she was just hurt by the entire situation and she's just like, you know, not lashing out by any means, but like, she's just overwhelmed in her own feelings, I think. And it's understandable in a, in a way. I'm not saying you should be at the end of that bashing by any means, but um just trying to yeah think about no, it. No, I'm a I'm I'm, an, I'm an empath myself. Like I I always yeah. try to like put myself in the other person's shoes. What is your status of you and Ava today? I know you guys kind of went through a tumultuous thing when the season came out, but um where do you stand today? Uh not friends, not close, don't talk. Um I haven't responded to her last text message she sent to me after she screamed at me at a bar. Um, oh no. Yeah, it was so. This was after you guys broke up. Yeah. Um, and can and, I ask about that though? How how did you guys break up? So was it, you know, you had texted her, you want to put off the engagement and start dating? Did she accept that of like that you guys were dating, or how did that all kind of play out? No, it was it was the it was at the when we landed um, that we talked that she like I said, like kind of made it clear that she wanted to stay on the same timeline um, and get married at the end of the month. And that's when I was like, just very, very put off um, and didn't think she was being realistic. Um, and it was kind of at that moment that like, I wouldn't say we broke up because like, even at the end, like when she got in her car um, with Kendra, with Kendra, Kendra came to pick her up. She came over and she gave me like a kiss even like it, that's how we left the airport. Like things were good there, but it was also like still stuff need, kind of needed to be talked about. We left it on a, you know, we'll talk later type thing. And that's what I kind of said in the, the, the text messages. Um, we'll have a time to talk. Uh, I don't want to keep reading verbatim the text messages necessarily, uh, but it was to where we say like, I, I was going to go to a lake out here with some of the cast members and she said something to the sense of like, oh, it's so good. Like, have a good time with all of them. My ex, Ben, actually hit me up when I got back. So crazy how things work out. And it was like trying to make me jealous. Like, absolutely. Like, I don't care. She can say whatever she wants to say. But like, I will accuse her of she was trying to make me jealous of when she sent that text. Because like, I didn't mean going to the lake of like any type of way. Like, I was just going to the lake. Like, that's I was just letting her know what I was doing. I still thought in my mind, you know, like we're dating like it's still someone that i was just letting know and then when she sent that text it was just like i had a moment of just like damn i had a moment of like was she like did she mean all that stuff to me <laughs> like did, did she really love me like it was just it was crazy like i was just like you and you're gonna see your ex but i i i, I texted back just like love it for you i hope you talk like hope everything goes well type thing i did send off a little petty lol to start the text message but it was just that had me kind of feeling a way too and i was just like oh and so to answer your question i think it was kind of at that moment when i got that text that it was made known that oh like we this is done whatever this is is done so so she meets up with her ex she sends a sex so like it just ends no uh, formal breakup and then there was a thing um, 
we oh, we all another thing. <laughs> Let's tell us about the thing. Lots of things. Um, we all met up. Um, this was before the the Mexico cast. Um, they weren't even back yet. They were still over there, and so it was everybody that didn't make it. Essentially, we all met up at a bar, <laughs> um, and that was even like Bliss was there. Um, this was before like any of that went down. And she met with Zach. This yeah. was before she met with Zach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was before. This was right. before. That's um, right. So yeah, I just say that like a lot of the cast was there. Everybody was there. Um, and so I knew Ava was coming. We hadn't really talked too much, but I knew she was coming to this. And so I was preparing myself, like I said, go to therapy. So I was ready, doing all my, I was ready to go, whatever. I was ready to handle the situation. Um, she gets there and immediately comes up to me with some just very respectful, great energy. And it was freaking great. Everything was a okay to start the night. Just rainbows. Everything was awesome. Wait, is this sarcasm? Because you know people no, listen to this podcast. No, 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 you'll get, you'll see what I'm doing here. It was amazing at first. Everybody was. There's, there's, it's about to take a turn. I'm excited to hear it. Where? Off the end, but, um, <laughs> to the point, like we we hugged it out and like we we were like you know it was such a crazy experience, but like I wish you the best. I hope everything's good with you. Like we talked for like five, 10 minutes. Everything was good. Even to the point after I was like, go put your drinks on my tab. Like it's, it's all good. Like, hope it, like it was great. <laughs> Fast forward about three hours. And mind you, this bar, like we had known the owner and he had, he lived like right upstairs. It was like this super nice loft. And so we had been up and down going there and getting drinks and having a good time. Like all the girls were there. Most of the guys were there. Like, and throughout the night, like, I think truly, um, this is like, I guess a little bit of an accusation. I'm not trying to, but I think she just saw me interacting with a lot of the other girls, not in any type of way, but just like, you know, just being myself a flirty dude, just like having a good time. And mm-hmm. I shit you not, sorry, my language, uh, but I, I curse on here all the time. <laughs> it was at the, towards the end of, we were downstairs, like after about three hours, like I said, of us being there, everyone was having a good time. The talks were good. She yelled at me from about five feet away across the table in a way that like, I've, I've never been yelled at in my life. Like not from my mother, my father, like nobody has ever in their life yelled at me like that. Like literally it was to the point, I couldn't even yell. I'm not going to try obviously, but to the point she was just like, can you Im- imitate it I was right just now on this podcast? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think you need to. <laughs> she, she just like, I saw this rage in her eyes and she just was like, JP, you treated me like absolute shit. You are the worst. Like she had been drinking a little bit. So like, didn't even really make sense. She was just yelling. And she just was like, JP, you treated me. I can't believe you did this. You're just an absolute. And I'm literally just going like this, like, like what? <laughs> Oh, like, where did no. this come from? I'm literally so confused. And I'm just like, I, I think I was just like a deer in the headlights. And I'm just letting her get this off. And then I finally, after I, I let her go for about 20 seconds, so she called me every name in the book, cursed at me. She was talking about my mom. Like, oh. it, it, it was it was it was wild. Um, and so to, to the point that I got up, I left the bar by myself. Um, wow. And I just got up and walked away. And about five or six of the people followed me. Um, and came out and made sure I was okay. And like, we just went to a, a different bar after that. Um, the cast did, but it was insane. Um, I have, you know, like there's probably been situations in college where I wasn't a, the best dude and maybe I deserve to get yelled at like that. Um, <laughs> but that way that she talked to me, like it was, it was, I, I'm not even, I, I, I mean this, it, it felt insane. Um, when I was going through, I felt like I was dealing with just like someone I, I didn't want to be around at all ever again. It, just to be honest, yeah. like that was the vibe. It, it because just the way that she was talking to me it was such rooted from like this place of hate of I don't you know it just it was I could just tell I've never been looked at or talked to like that. Um, and so yeah, yeah. Morning, next morning it was I got endless texts from all of the cast like JP we're so sorry you went through that I have them from anybody that you could think of, like literally sent me one the next day. Cause it was that type of the whole bar stopped. Like everybody in the bar 
like looked at like what the why is this why what did he do like yeah and so well, was, do you think she was do you think she was angry because she thought because you said you were being a little bit like a flirty like do you think she was angry because she thought you guys were still together or because i know you guys never formally broke up so do you think that's where it came from where she thought you guys were still kind of dating and then she saw you being like a little bit flirty no no sorry i didn't i wasn't clear on this but in the text messages after the the ex, when she said she was going to go meet up with the ex, there were other text messages in between that made it clear that we weren't dating anymore. They're like, after that, that we weren't dating. And then that was part of the talk um, when we got to the bar that it was the oh. whole wish you well, hope everything is amazing. Like, if you ever need me, we even talked about going to church together and like mm -hmm. we, it, things were going to be okay. And like, but no, at that point, we, it was, it was clear that we weren't, we weren't a couple anymore. Okay. We weren't. And I don't want to discredit what Natalie said to the sense, like she, she definitely still probably felt a way because we were just engaged and you yeah. know, like we, we were, we had real emotions. I told her, I love her. Like, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I've said that to, I could count on one hand, how many girls I've said that to. Uh, so it, it very understand. I, I, I get where the want to speak her mind about how she was feeling came about, but the way that she did it and how she did it, I'll never forget. And at that moment kind of showed me like, well, damn, we, like we're never even gonna be friends. Like, yeah. that's, that's how you feel about me type thing, so. Do you think that you could ever get to a point where like some time has passed and both of you like can kind of settle your feelings and you can maybe come back to a friendship or Absolutely. more? Absolutely. Um, um, I, I think, I truly believe everybody deserves, I, I don't mean this in a terrible, but I believe everybody deserves a second chance. I believe people, mm -hmm. perspectives can change. I, I, I do believe that people can change yes. when they want to. And, and when there is enough time that goes by, I think that can heal anything, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, most things, right? Not anything, but so yes, yeah. absolutely. I'm all for it. That's all. That's my whole thing. It's all love. I, I got, I, it would it would have been if you know we would have stayed friends. So like yeah, even now to where if she wants to, um, to talk like I would I would one hundred percent be down for that. So after seeing some of your engaged cast members on TV, do you ever wonder how life would have been like if you were followed? Oh, anybody that says no to that is lying. Of course, yes. Like it's, <laughs> of course, like they're going. You know what I mean? It's they're. They're rock stars and they, they, they were rock stars before they were rock stars. But of course, you know, it's definitely a thought that you're like, damn, I'm not going to lie. There hasn't been an ounce of jealousy, an ounce of it. Like when it comes to like that type of stuff, like being able to do all the like nothing until I saw Chelsea and Kwame throw out the first pitch at the Mariners game. Then I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I was going through it. But yes. that's because I love I love the Mariners. That's just my thing. I love the Mariners games. But um, no, I. Of course I do, but at the same time, it's never like a, oh man, type thing. Cause this yeah. whole, this whole experience and experiment brought me truly some of my best friends now. And mm -hmm. that to me is the ultimate win. I'm not trying to sound corny. That sounds really corny, but like, that's no, the truth. I, love that. like, I, I created connections that I would have never created. I opened doors to myself that I would have never opened, um, met people like you guys <laughs> that would have never, you know what I mean? Like this stuff that, yeah. I'm just truly mm -hmm. thankful for and blessed. And so I look at it like that to where, yep, I think about it. But at the same time, it's not like a, I'm not sad. I, I'm, you know, everything happens mm -hmm. for a reason. And I believe that it's, you know, God has a plan. And sometimes it doesn't always make sense, but it will. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay. So JP, tell us what's next for you. What are your goals? What does your future look like? Yeah. Um. So. I just, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy right now with where I'm at I, in my job. I just, I just got a, a nice, a nice raise. Things are going good um, <laughs> with my job. Uh, you know, I, I, right now I'm, I'm really just saving and, and work. I just sound so cliche, like a damn quote, but like, I'm just working on me. I really am. <laughs> I just like after work, I go to the gym, come home, <laughs> cook a meal for myself and do it all again the next day and save some money, see my loved ones, go visit all my, I have 
you know, I'm old now. You know what I'm saying? I'm 30. So all of my friends, they got kids. <laughs> what are you saying about us? <laughs> you're right. Yeah, we're 30, I'm 31. I thought, I'm it was, 32. I thought it was 24 and 25. My bad. Oh, um, no. oh good save. Good save. <laughs> um, but no, I always go down. They, they don't live in Seattle, but I'm always going and visiting um, my friends down and seeing their kids. And I'm Uncle Jay to a lot of to to a lot of little ones. So I love it. Um, oh. My best friends, oh, Shay yeah. and Greg and yeah, I, I love going and seeing them and just spending quality time. That's what I'm I'm all about, you know. So I guess the the, the short answer would just keep living, keep enjoying life, and taking every opportunity um, that comes to me with open arms and being uh, being ready for whatever. Just being, you know, like this this whole experience of Love Is Blind showed me that anything can happen on any day at any time with any picture post, you know what I mean? Like things can happen <laughs> uh, and change your life. Uh, so yeah, just keep living, keep being happy, keep smiling, keep trying to bring joy to people. Oh, I love awesome. that. Thank you, JP. Thank you for coming on out of the pod. We love telling these like untold lost stories. And so it's good to kind of hear what happened to you, um, um, as part of the experiment. So thanks again so much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. As always, we absolutely love getting your questions and comments. So please continue sending them to our Instagram page at Out of the Pods. And make sure you leave a review and subscribe because Deep D and I will be chatting with special guests and chatting about fun topics in the future. So you don't want to miss what we'll have to say. See you next Monday. Bye.